Who is there the we go. It worked. All right. There we are. We are live. Welcome, everybody, to Hump Day Hangouts. This is episode number 443. Today is the 10th of May, 2023. Got Chris Bradley and myself, Adam, here, finally back. Uh, been missing out the last couple of weeks while I was uh, catching some flights back and forth here and there, but uh, happy to be here today. So uh, while Bradley gets a couple things set up, going to say hello uh, to Chris and uh, I guess then Bradley, why not? So Chris, how's it going today? Super sweet, lots of stuff to do as usual. I don't know, like, it's like ten, the last 10 days, I literally feel like I'm in a time warp, warp and it's going to be the same, like, till, I don't know, beginning of June, like, but it is what it is, man. Yeah, Big it's projects good. happening and, like, look of fear is pumping on it as well. So nice. quite happy. How are you doing? Yes. Uh, I'm doing good. I just saw the uh, some of the results. Um, our partner, Local Fury, was sharing, and so seeing some of the uh, ranking reports on that stuff is pretty cool. So I think we might have to uh, come up with some case study results pretty soon for that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> All right, or maybe we are. <laughs> so, uh, cool. Well, Bradley, how you doing today? Busy man, busy busy day, but glad to be here. Um, just working on. Uh, I just launched a new niche edit link service. So, you know, I've got over 450, it's approaching 500 blogs now. Uh, so, and a lot of these blogs have, you know, anywhere between 25 to 40 posts on them that don't have any contextual links. Um, they were topic clustered sites that I created um, so that they're fully relevant, both at the page re referring page level and the referring domain level. Top topical relevance match, which is what matters. That that makes a big difference. You get full credit for a link when it has relevance match at both the referring page level and the referring domain level. Uh, if it doesn't have a relevance match at both, then it loses some of its value. It doesn't mean it's completely ineffective, but it does lose some of its value. So uh, anyways, so now that I've got so many blogs approaching 500 um, that I figured it would it, it makes sense to be able to offer a lower cost option for niche edits or link insertions is another term for that. And that is all it is super easy. All somebody needs to do is submit their target URL and their desired anchor text. And that's it. And we go in and we, we find uh, what we do is we'll take the target URL, run it through on page. AI to get the Google's natural language categories of the target URL. So what is the natural language categories that Google has determined are the main content area of the page? Then we match that up with topical trust flow categories that we have available on blogs. And then we place the link there. So all you do is submit your target URL and anchor text and boom, we do the rest and it's uh, delivered in five days. And it's a much, it's a, it's a more cost-effective way to do it than having post publish like where we developed the content and everything else so anyway it was good to get that up it's still waiting for it to be approved and vetted um but it should be available tomorrow and i think that's going to be a kind of another option that now i can provide to our members which gives a little bit more link diversity so cool well i was going to say two things then i was going to say well bradley where can people go to get this uh do you want to send them to vetted and then also if it is vetted i think we got still uh something uh we can pass we along from vetted right from diego we do. Um, Vasco. Uh, Vasco sent us the uh, a co coupon that we can use. You guys can use for any service, not just mine. But it's it's the coupon code is Semantic, and it's ten percent off of any service. Um, it's only good for fifty uses per month. I think that's per month. So um, you know, if you're going to try try check it out, check it out. Um, my niche edit service will be available probably within the next 24 hours or by tomorrow morning, actually. So less than 24 hours, I pinged Vasco and uh, Facebook to let them know that to, to approve it because it was pending approval. And um, it's it's never more than 24 hours before it's approved. So I expect that service to be live. But again, just go to vetted. That's vetted with three T's, V-E-T-T-T-E-D.com. Use the coupon code semantic for any service. It doesn't have to be my services, any service, and you get 10% off. And like I said, my niche edit, service should be available tomorrow so there you go nice okay i apologize i typed in five percent but uh it's ten percent so yeah uh, i think i don't think you were here last week vasco pinged me and said hey man let's uh up it to ten percent and i was like oh okay so, if you insist <laughs> yeah okay awesome so. uh well switching gears slightly um i want no bradley we can't spill the beans uh totally on this but um I know you had started, I believe, working with a small group uh, from the mastermind, or you've, I know you've at least put it together um, and going through and, and putting together kind of the next generation of training for the mastermind for uh, people that, you know, want to have kind of a set 
curriculum to really come out the other end, um, you know, with a lead pipeline uh, and kind of have all of it explained walking through with them over the course of eight to 12 weeks. So that, I might correct you got started on that or you've just formed the group. Yeah, we formed the group and um, we start on Monday, the 15th. So uh, Monday is going to be the official kind of kickoff day for that. Um, on Friday, I'll be sending out some additional information to the people in the group about it. Uh, we've got a, a private um, channel or whatever you call it inside of Circle or our community for that. And there's seven people in it right now. So um, I have the availability to open it up for three more. So if any of our mastermind members are listening uh, or anybody that's not in the mastermind, if you want to be part of that beta group, uh, that starts on Monday the 15th, then now would be a good time to speak up. Like I said, it's only going to be three slots left for that. And um, I want to, I, you know, I need, I want to have a chat with anybody that desires to join that group first before just admitting them or accepting them because, um, you know, it's, it's a beta group. I'm looking for feedback. I'm looking for people that are going to take action. This is not a pro program that you come just sit and consume content. That's what hump day hangouts are for and all that, you know, you want to watch consume content. You can do that elsewhere. This group is for action takers that want to build a business using the directory site as a, so I'm calling it the directory hybrid agency. The directory is the linchpin of the business. It's really the epicenter of your entire agency. And that's what we're going to do is build that out starting on the 15th. Uh, we're going to fast track it a little bit from what the tradit, what the normal kind of, once we launch it publicly, that will be a 12 week program. But because the the existing mastermind members that have chosen to join this group, this beta group, a lot, some, most of them have are, are at varying stages of already starting the build process for the directory. Uh, we can fast track and take some shortcuts just to overcome some of like the initial stuff that a lot of our members already have determined. Um, my goal is to have this uh, go through this one time with our beta group first to finish finding weaknesses in the training and, and that kind of stuff, uh, um, filling gaps and things like that. And then we'll prepare it finally for a full launch uh, around the end of the, uh, somewhere around the, the fourth quarter of this year. Um, so that's kind of the goal. Well, a uh, good time to slip this question in before we uh, wind it up and get into the pre-posted questions. But Aaron Powell was asking, um, would your mastermind be any good for someone who's just starting out in SEO and website creation for clients? I mean, it can be, um, it depends on how ambitious you are and how, you know, how much you're willing to, to, to learn and stuff like, I mean, cause it's not, you know, the, our mastermind is not for, you know, green newbie novices or whatever. Um, like I'd have to really dumb down the language and I don't, I'm not picking on you, Aaron. That's, I'm not saying you're dumb. I'm saying I have, I, you know, we use a lot of SEO jargon and technical terms and things like that because the mastermind is supposed to be for SEO professionals, not for people just starting out. It doesn't mean that you can't join the mastermind if you're just starting out. Just understand that it is supposed to be for people that are, you know, either SEO consultants or agency owners or whatever, people that have some experience in SEO. Um, you can yeah, learn I a lot. There's SEO. There's SOPs, there's training, there's the community, you can ask questions, there's uh, webinars, all that kind of stuff. So you will learn a lot. Um so I'm not trying to discourage you from it. I'm just saying that, you know, again, if you if you're willing to learn and you can you're willing to put in, uh, you know, the time to, to to learn the processes and everything else. It's great because we have SOPs, which are going to make it easier for you to learn, in my opinion, than just going through normal training and you're left to do it on your own. We have SOPs, step by step processes. So it makes it a little bit easier, in my opinion, to learn. So. 100%. Yeah. And all I was going to say, Bradley, was just kind of like you said about looking for action takers in that small group. Um, if you are newer, but you have some experience exposure to SEO, then I think you can join so long as you're ready to really, you know, uh, put the pedal to the metal and apply what you're learning. You know, if you're just looking to come in and kind of learn, um, you know, that, that may not be the best fit, but if you're ready to really put it to, to use, then it, it would probably work well for you. Yeah, this is not for people who are looking for how to handle WordPress or how to code in WordPress or do anything in WordPress. You can watch a YouTube video for that for free. Enjoy. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm I don't I'm not going to teach basics on WordPress setup and installation. That's ridiculous. Or you can go to YouTube and, like Chris just said, and find all the tutorial videos you want on that. Uh, you know, basic WordPress setup. You know, you should know how to do on your own. Um, now, how to how to optimize it for SEO? Yeah, that's that's what we're all about. So. 
Cool. Well, uh, guys, one more quick one. I uh, wanted to say we, uh, we're going to be putting the final touches on um, getting ticket sales up for POFU Live. Uh, taking place outside around somewhere in Boston. Uh, we're still looking for the perfect location. That is the last weekend of September. So pencil that in. Uh, if you have attended POFU Live before, uh, we look forward to seeing you again. If you have not, uh, then don't miss out. We'll be putting out more information, um, but it is this year an in-person event. The last few years, we've had to do it online. Uh, we're going to be meeting up. It is in person. Uh, it is us. It is guest speakers, and it is focused on local SEO, but also around building and growing agencies. Um, so it may cover uh, client acquisition. It may cover um, some of the sales process, but uh, the main focus is, of course, local SEO agencies. So uh, looking forward to getting that up and going, and we will definitely have an early bird deal. We love it. Uh, the people who purchase their tickets early helps us plan. Um, so that will be your chance to get a good deal on the tickets. All right. Have we decided awesome what we're going to do for fun yet? Whoop. Uh, no, we do have a cool VIP. Um, we've got a few ideas. We got to nail it down. I don't want to say what it might be, uh, but we will have a VIP event, uh, that will include, um, a dinner, uh, with the speakers, with us, that'll be taken care of. And then we will also have some sort of event together with that. I think, uh, we're still looking at a few things. And this Bradley? Awesome, yeah, right? I just hope. I just hope Bradley doesn't spill all the beans again on that VIP event. Like, oh no, that'd be terrible. <laughs> yeah, like yeah, I remember that one specific one special event where we were like, we gotta drag Bradley out of this now. Like it's, <laughs> it's I, I over. Used to, Got it. That, that's when I used to drink, though. I quit drinking, so uh, I'm, I, my my lips aren't quite as loose now as they used to be. <laughs> no, we can do. <laughs> yeah. All right, yeah, guys. We, we didn't have to drag Bradley out because he was too drunk. It was just like because he shared too, he spilled too many beans that I didn't. Yeah, but I want to be out. <laughs> I, I tend to tend to had loose lips when I would drink, uh, but I I don't drink anymore. But um, yeah, it'll be fun regardless. It'll be a good good event. It'll be good to be back in person again too. So definitely, definitely. cool. Um, well, guys, I think that's it for now. Um, let's go ahead and hop into the questions. Right on. I see a couple. Uh, hey, uh, Frankie, what's up, buddy? Um, you know, I, I misplaced. I had written a, written a list of people that wanted to be in the be the beta group, and I th thought your name was on it, but I, I misplaced the list, and so I had to contact those that I could remember. So if you weren't on the list, Frankie, and you want to be in that beta group, you've just taken one of the other three slots. So definitely, um, you're welcome to join for sure. So that means there's only two spots left. <laughs> uh, all right, guys, I'm going to grab the screen, and we'll get into it. Don't really need to grab the screen, but I'm going to anyway. And Aaron, what's up? Uh, yeah. Hey, man, come and join us, man. If, you know, worst that can happen is it's too advanced for you. And if that's the case, you know, just contact us and support. And we'll try to resolve it somehow for you. But um, honestly, I, I think being in a more advanced group is better than being in a less advanced group where you're you're going to cap out at what you can learn very quickly. It's better to be around other people that are successful in the SEO industry, running their own businesses and agencies, et cetera, than to be in a group full of a bunch of other novices and newbies, in my opinion. So I think you're better off joining a more advanced group. Um, you know, you are the average of the people that you surround yourself with, right? So if you surround yourself with other people that are successful in the SEO industry, you will have a, um, a better chance of success yourself. Does that make sense? So get out of those novice groups, guys. Those don't help. They really don't. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I say that with not because I'm trying to push you guys out of other groups, but when you surround yourself around a bunch of other people that don't know what they're doing, it, you know, people love to give bad advice and uh, you'll get a lot of that in those kind of newbie groups and things like that. It, I think it's better to join a higher level group because there's people there with more experience, um, you know, I just think it's a higher quality of, of, of uh, business minded people that you surround yourself with. So anyway. OK, uh, first one is from Harry. Harry says, do you know of any software to manage and group lots of YouTube accounts? I'm looking to get a network of accounts going for video syndication. I do not. I'm sorry. I don't know of any. Um, any software to manage and group lots of YouTube accounts, possibly TubeBuddy or video vidIQ. Maybe, maybe some of those will do it. Um, I don't do any kind of like bulk YouTube anything anymore. So I don't, I don't know of any apps that do that um, in case anybody else wants to, uh, or excuse me, if anybody in our audience knows of any group man or YouTube account management apps other than TubeBuddy or VidIQ, 
uh, please post in the comments and I'll, um, I'll relay that as, um, as we get to them. Alternating and manages assisted associated social accounts and rings for each one and a spreadsheet isn't practical. Um, I think now, okay, so I use a, uh, what's called a no code database um, app called Fusio for my link building business, which was absolutely transformative for my link building business. Cause we, the first four or five months, four months, I think last year when I'd started the business, we had um, grown up to a certain level of revenue and we did it hundred percent in sheets. Uh, well, either it, originally Google sheets, but then we moved into Microsoft apps instead, because I felt like it was stupid to have all of the link building data in Google, Google drive, Google, Google sheets, Google dots, et cetera. So we moved the entire operation into Microsoft apps, Microsoft business. Um, and I'm still getting used to that over a year later. No kidding. Uh, anyway. Um, so we had built the semantic links business entirely in spreadsheets and it got to a point where it was unmanageable, just like what you said, Harry, about, you know, it, it's just, it, it isn't practical. It wasn't practical then, but it was, it was sufficient for a, the, the early part of the, the, that business, right. Uh, the early stages of semantic links, but I found this app, it was on AppSumo and I had to buy an AppSumo plus account in order to, to buy it at the time. So it's not on AppSumo anymore. But it's fabulous. Um, I don't even know what the pricing is, but it's really good. Uh, it's it makes it's really easy to manage. I, I can't show the dashboard of it, obviously, because I've got all my client information and everything else. But we use the hell out of this app. My whole team does, and it's great for that. Now I know there's other ones that do it, but this is a custom no code database, relational database. It has workflows and all. The, it's great. You can do all kinds of stuff with it. And a little bit of a learning curve, but don't they all? You know what I mean. Um, so like, for instance, we we added local blogs to uh, link building services for my subscriber clients. Uh, in a couple, two to three months from now, we'll be able to start selling local blog links as one-off services too. But anyway, my team, because we just launched that on April 1st, so it's been five or six weeks now that, since we started that, um, my team was having trouble kind of managing local blogs. So I had to create another app inside Fusio to, to handle it. And I did that on a Sunday. Uh, it was kind of unscheduled, but my project manager sent me a message like, hey, is there any way you can create an app? And so anyway, I did it. It took me three hours because I'm, I'm more familiar with it, but I don't build stuff in Fusio enough to be able to do it like very efficiently. So it still took me three hours, but now it's beautiful. Now we've got, by the way, I think I mentioned this last week, we had added like four or five writers last week or two weeks ago, and it brought semantic links up to 23 full-time employees. We added another four since last week. <laughs> I got 27 full-time pe people on my team now for Semantic Links. It's fucking crazy. <laughs> we went from, from two employees in January last year to 27 employees now. Um, it's crazy. And so anyway, the whole entire team is working on Fusio now, and it's 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 seamless. It's absolutely flawless. It's fantastic. It's a great app. So um, I don't know what this costs. It's in pounds, um, but it's, it's, a great, it's a great app. So I'm going to put this in chat and i'm sure there's others guys it doesn't have to be this one this is just the one that i use that's why i brought it up okay moving on i know like Airtable does similar stuff and um i don't know there's a bunch of them out there but fusio is great i like it a lot yeah did i give bad advice to eliminate competition <laughs> that's that's you know what? That's probably yeah. why. No, I think some people give bad advice just because they don't fucking know any better and they want to feel important. But I think there's probably a lot of people that give bad advice to uh, throw the competition off as well. You're you're probably right. <laughs> That's funny. All right. Brad says, hey, guys, how would you approach managing tracking costs for an agency that does software projects and has a small freelance team of developers each charging different rates without things getting messy and out of hand? I couldn't tell you, man. I'm not a I'm not a I don't develop software. Um, I'm actually having a, some software developer semantic links right now. And I had to have Jeremy Noltzman, the co-owner and developer of uh, Press Advantage. He's kind of like 
managed he's been the point person for that and he's just doing it out of the goodness of his heart because we're friends you know um and helped me hire a developer and he's kind of helped guiding that project based on what i'm asking to have done and it's so i've, I've never managed any of that shit. And in fact like i said I, the first developer that i've ever hired is currently in progress now and i had to have jeremy help me manage that because i don't know how to manage those i don't know how to manage that type of a of a, of a project period adam or chris do either of you have any recommendations no, not off the uh, top of my head. Sorry. Okay. Yeah, sorry, guys. It's just not something that we do. Um, I don't know if Chris is still around. I know Chris has done some development projects in the past, but, um, you know. Yeah, I mean, sorry, we've touched on this before. I mean, just the rough stuff applies. And, and I apologize, Bradley. I didn't see your full answer. I was trying to uh, get us that uh, indexing software. But, you know, it's just kind of having a process to it and then refining it as you go. And, and I know that sounds silly and it's really generic, but a lot of people just go into this and are just kind of blind and like, oh, I'll just do it. However, you know, you have a process, you can change how you do it, you know, whether it's by milestone or by hour, but have a plan and uh, go with it. Other than that, I would go find people who specifically do software and right. ask that. Yeah. 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 Um... Yeah. Yeah. That's what I would do. I would go into some of these other groups, perhaps that, you know, are SaaS groups or whatever that uh, software development um, and, and ask them because they're going to have more experience. I don't have any experience. Anything that I would tell you would be complete bullshit. <laughs> like, you know I what think, I mean? Because I, mean, I have no, no experience with that. So I can't provide any guidance on that. I apologize. But, uh, like, you know, getting firsthand experience. So Bradley has firsthand experience with someone who's telling him what to do. And so I think, you know, I'm sorry, I can't see the name. Oh, Brad. Um, you know, you should do the same. Don't take it from us. Go get your firsthand experience, right. somebody who's done this. I've taken the advice uh, from Jeremy, from Chris, from some other people, and I'm doing the same. I'm having an app developed for me on the side. And I would have probably done hourly, but after talking to everybody, I was like, oh my God, no, like, you know, you can, but if you don't know what you're doing or you're not sure, or you want to keep costs down, like get a milestone, you know, agreement with the developer um, and at least start that way until you have a relationship at the very least. Um, but again, I can't tell you that that's going to work. I haven't yet done it. That's just what I was told. So I would go find some people. Thank you, Adam. Now, he goes next. He says, hey, Brad and team, when building a directory, uh, how would you go about getting your first 20 listings? Scrape them. Do you scrape and add listings manually before launching? Yes. That's how I started the agency uh, or, excuse me, the directory site. I only scrape nine sites or, excuse me, states, nine states. I do one state at a time. By the way, this is 100% taught in SOP format in the mastermind. Literally step-by-step -step instructions on how to do every part of this process. Um, and uh, yeah, so I scraped nine states up and down the East Coast, um, literally from, I think, Pennsylvania down through Florida. And uh, and then uh, from that point, like after I got that, I think the last state I did was Georgia, I think. Anyway, um, and then after that, it, the, the, the directory ranked and I haven't really added manually uh, or scraped. And ever since then, I've just been receiving inbound leads. So I haven't really done much since then, but yeah, that's, that's what we use. Originally I was using um, D7 lead finder as a scraper. That's expensive though. It's good, but it's expensive. It's called D7 lead finder. Uh, D7 lead. I'm going to show you the ones that I've used and the one that I'm currently using. So D7 lead finder is this one here. It's, it's expensive. Um, in order to be efficient with this, if you're scraping leads. Now, if you're just, you're saying 20 leads, by the way, don't, don't just scrape 20, man. Scrape hundreds, thousands and load them up into the directory. Seriously. It doesn't matter. Scrape, you know what I, I do it on a state by state basis. So I go in and I scrape all the tree service contractors in the state of Virginia, for example, that's where I started because that's where I am. And uh, then you go through and there's a process of cleaning and deduping the list, getting rid of non-relevant uh, entries because that's going to happen when you do when you scrape you're going to get stuff that's completely non-relevant so you got to go through a filtering and cleaning process once you go through all of that then what's left then you import into the directory and it i just have a basic i had a i had a um an onboarding call with one of our new mastermind members within the last this week sometime and uh he created some sort of an app that connects with chat gpt 
and actually creates a, and, and it connects to a, I don't know if it's done through Zapier or what, anyway, it was fabulous. This, what the configuration that he set up sounded amazing. Um, and I was like, dude, you got to share that with me. Like, but anyway, I've just got a templated kind of uh, tokenized description in the directory so that when I import a CSV file, it just populates the business description section of the listing with the same description, right? It's just tokenized so that the company name and the service area, et cetera, are all swapped out with what's relevant to that particular listing. But they're all the same, very basic, unoptimized listings. Um, Whoever it was that I was talking with, and if you're if you're watching, I forgive me for forgetting your name, and I probably I wouldn't have called you out anyways in the middle of a public webinar. But um, one of the new mastermind members that I had a call with, like I said, he he's got a directory, and he worked out he created his own kind of app integration that connects with ChatGPT and automatically creates a unique description for every business based upon it goes and crawls the website of the listing description, so that the the target website, right, the clients or the prospects website and it pulls these products and services from there and it creates a description around the product services and uh location of that particular business i think that's fucking brilliant i can't wait to figure that out or, or have him show me how he did it so that i can work that into our process but currently what i'm saying is it's just a very basic generic and you can most of the listings that are currently showing on my shit give me a minute let me clean up my other browser first before i do this let me get rid of some of these tabs. So I'm gonna just gonna show you treecarehq.com. You'll see like, uh, hold on, is I got it open. I'm just closing down some windows here, guys. Give me a second. All right, all right. So here's treecarehq.com, and you'll see like these are probably yeah. So this is a kind of fairly op. That that's not the generic op. Uh, description, excuse me, that's what I was looking for. That's not the generic description I'm talking about. Um, it's probably, I don't know if I could find one very quickly or not. Anyway, what I'm saying is it's very like just a line of text and it says, you know, company names provides tree services in city, contact whatever to, to request a free estimate. Um, but why I'm telling you to do more than 20 is because that's how you start to build relevance into the directory, right? Is just by adding more and more listings. You can start to build authority through adding more listings, if that makes sense. So don't just start with 20, try to, you know, pick a state, whatever state that you're currently in or whatever state you desire you want to start with and uh, scrape all the listings in that particular state for that type of a business. Then go through the process of cleaning and deduping and everything else. There's another service that was on AppSumo, um, but I think you can buy it direct too. And it, it's really no difference in pricing as far as I know. It's called Lead Scrape. I used this for a long time. Um, you have to have the business license for this to work properly, though. So let's see, buy right there. I think it's like 300 bucks a year or something like that. Yeah, 247 per year. Um, and that works pretty good, too. That This is a desktop app instead of a cloud app. So this works pretty good, too. Um, it actually has, this does a little bit better as far as producing less non-relevant listings when you do a scrape than D7 lead finder. It's not as efficient. It, so with this, you have to basically start a scrape job at night, but when you go to leave for the night or when you're done for the night, that's when you fire this up and let it run overnight because it it's a resource hog. It'll use, your, it'll use up all your computer's resources and everything else, and it takes a long time. But once it's done, you've got a, a, a good list. It's very effective, uh, and it, there's less stuff to clean than there is from D7 lead finder. Um, but there's you still have to go through that kind of cleaning process that filtering process you have to every time no matter what more recently i'm using outscraper right here google uh that's 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 just a post but this is the um google maps data scraper that's what this is the one i'm using now and what i like about this is this is pay as you go and it's very inexpensive so you can come in here and you can load 50 bucks in credits up and that'll last you a long time right and this works really good too and this is fairly quick um, this one produces results really quickly and it exports them in CSV format already. So it's, it's, it's really nice. Uh, this is, th this is what we're using or what I'm using now. And I, I, I really like this one. So there you go. Okay. Um, I have a strong domain. So wanting to charge for listings and aside from SEO, trying to think of ways I can convey value to people as to why they should use my directory. Yeah. But what I'm saying is, so another thing you can do is you can put in, um, WP links. 
uh, WordPress plugin. I'm just gonna say WP plugin, WP links plugin right there. Um, it's by this right here. This is a uh, web limited or well web LTD or whatever. This is a really good, you, there's a free version and there's a pro version. The pro version is very inexpensive, but you can do um, with WP links as a WordPress plugin, you can set in, I'm, there's probably other plug. I know there's other plugins that do this. I like this one the best. In fact, this developer, this plugin developer has a lot of plugins that I've been buying lately. They've got really good uh, suite of tools that I've been buying almost all of their, and they're inexpensive too for the, um, for the pro or developer license or whatever. Anyway, you can use this plugin to set all links to no follow, all external links. And then you can go in and set exceptions to those that become premium directory listings or clients of yours, or however you monetize your directory, you can go set exclusions to exclude those from the no follow list. In other words, you can turn their links to do follow, those that are paying you, clients, premium directory subscribers or whatever, however you decide to monetize it. So that's why I say, just go ahead and populate the site with hundreds or even thousands of listings, because that's going to build even more authority to the domain, right? It does. It, it makes it more authoritative. And then what you do is, like I said, automatically by default, no follow all external links. And then as you add new clients in or, or they people upgrade to premium subscriptions, then you just add their domain to the exclusion list so that it becomes do follow links. Does that make sense? And you can do all kinds of stuff with the directory to make it more valuable, to make their listing more valuable. In fact, I started working on that this morning on Twitch uh, because I'm part of the directory hybrid agency training that I'm developing right now is um, using the directory as uh, and for, for all client work, you use the directory as your primary, as like one of the primary assets for a client, right? So you create an optimized directory listing. You can add schema, optimize content, Google map embed, video embed, uh, video object schema so that you can get the thumbnail to show, the video thumbnail to show next to the directory listing in the SERPs or the search results. So there's a number of things that you can do to um, really improve the directory and make a listing very valuable. And here's the other thing. Remember, when you create directory listings, premium listings for subscribers or for clients or whatever, um, that becomes a primary link building target, right? For, for your client that then you use their budget whatever retainer budget they're giving you to build links to your directory. You understand to their listing on your directory. So it benefits them, but it's also benefiting your directory. So if that client decides that they don't want to use your services or pay you anymore, you can go back in, remove their domain from the exclusion list, the no follow exclusion list, right? So you automatically no follow all their links, but you use their budget to build links to your directory, which is going to benefit your entire directory. Does that make sense? So there's a number of, it's again, Terry Kyle used to call that switch box SEO, where you control kind of link equity by being able to turn the switch on and off. And that's what you can do with a follow, no follow, right? You can uh, turn it on and off if you wanted. Um, so that anyways, like I said, there's just a lot of benefit to building a directory guys for your agency, because man, you can do so much with it and you can build so much authority using your client's budgets to your directory, which is your asset that you own and control right? They're, your client can leave. They can't take that from you. You still have the directory and all the money that you use from their budget to build links to your directory, which benefits them while they're a paying client. Does that make sense? So anyway, um, I would encourage you definitely to proceed with that plan. All right. Anyway, moving on. Bob says, how would you approach schema for an affiliate best of type list, best of type list article? Uh, I have blog posting FAQ and image schema already in place by Rank Math. Wondering if I had any other custom schema to help get an edge in the SERPs. Um, maybe review schema. If you're doing reviews of each, if you're like if you're reviewing each of the article, uh, the best of in the list, perhaps review schema. I don't know. Um, again, guys, I don't do affiliate SEO, so. Um, I'm not sure. I, you know, I, I do local SEO guys. I don't know. I mean, link building and local SEO because link building is link building, but um, my own agency, my expertise is in local SEO. Okay. Um, as far as that, that, I mean, what you said, you already have other than a uh, review scheme. I don't really have any other recommendations for you um, because again, I don't do that kind of work. So I don't know what the, what the best kind of recipe is of schema uh, for, for that type of a, an article. Um, 
sorry, I can't help you there, man. Bill says, is there any value in taking our RSS XML file for our website and uploading it to our drive stacks and ID pages? Uh, I have no idea. I've not tested that. I don't know. Sorry, guys. Is there any value? I've not tested that. Okay, next one. Bob says, what are geographically relevant links and how do they help SEO? That's a good question. So let me pause for one minute and I'll pull up a graphic, which will help to explain this a little bit better. Okay. So the question to repeat it one more time. What are geographically relevant links and how do they help SEO? Okay, so geographically relevant links are links that are have local relevance to their target. So what does that mean? Uh, an example of a local link would be a local tree service company, right? That's my agency deals with tree service contractors. So a local tree service company gets a call from a local attorney office, a law firm, a local law firm that says, hey, we got a tree in our parking lot that uh, looks dead and we're afraid that you know a storm or wind could blow it over and damage some cars. We need you to come to remove this tree from our parking lot. So the tree guy goes out to the law firm's uh, you know, <clears throat> location and removes the tree. And they do a fantastic job. So the, 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 the attorney who owns the law firm, he does a post on his blog to say, hey, we want to thank uh, Bradley's tree service for coming out and removing the tree in our parking lot. They did a fabulous job. If you need tree services in Culpeper, Virginia, contact Bradley's tree service, right? Boom. That's a link that has no topical relevance, right? Because it's a link coming from a law firm site pointing to a tree service site. But because it's in the same city, it has geographic relevance or local relevance because Google understands that that link is coming from another local entity, right? That's in close physical proximity to the target business, the business that it's linking to. Does that make sense? So that link has an effect, a significant effect on maps ranking um, because local searches now are all about geographic signals, right? Um, it's funny, there was a discussion going on in our masterminds community. Um, Cecilia had a great, she's one of our rock star members, in my opinion. <laughs> she uh, she had a great, um, I'm not going to open it up because I don't, uh, but anyway, she had a really good description of how to kind of convey how Google's algorithm has shifted so much lately. Um, things are so hyper-local now. And a lot of that, it, it really has to do with where you are when you're searching, you're, you're, where you're geolocated, seriously, that, more so than it does with keywords. Like a location modifier is a keyword modifier, not a ge geographic modifier. It's not a signal for geo. It's a, it's a, it's a keyword modifier. Anyway, all I'm trying to say is a link coming from another local source. Google understands that that link is coming from another local source. Here's a question that I've heard when I've explained this before on like sales calls and such. People say, well, yeah, but what if the law firm's attorney site was hosted in California? They're in Virginia, but their site is hosted in California. How is that link providing geographic relevance? It has no bearing on where the, where the host is. That, that makes no difference. What makes a difference is the, the link is coming from a website that is associated with a local entity, a bit, the law firm, which is a local entity in that particular city. Does that make sense? So it doesn't matter where the, the, the freaking site could be hosted in China for all that matters. It doesn't matter if that website is associated with a local entity, then that link is a, is a geographically or locally relevant link. And that helps has a significant influence on maps ranking and a slight influence on organic ranking. And conversely, topical relevance, topically relevant links have a significant influence on organic and a very slight influence on maps. Um, so that's why local relevant links really make a difference. And if you guys doubt this, just start look again. If you're doing any kind of backlink analysis, if you look at the top ranked organic competitors in competitive niches or competitive areas, uh, or or combination of both, you'll see that usually, not always, there's always anomalies, but most of the time, you'll see that the top ranked organic competitors have really relevant backlink profiles, topically relevant. But if you look at the maps, whatever's ranked in the maps three pack, most of the time, not always, again, there's always outliers, there's always anomalies, but usually you'll see what's ranked in the maps three pack. They don't have really 
topically relevant link profiles. But if you analyze their backlink profiles, you'll typically see that most of the top ranked in maps section have backlinks, uh, significant backlinks, or at least maybe not a significant number, but some maybe high, uh, um, particularly powerful links that are all from coming from other local entities. There's a couple of ways you can do this, guys. You can get local links, kind of more the, the more manual, traditional approach to getting links, which would be, and here's some great options that work incredibly well. They're harder to scale, but they work really well. Number one, getting a link from your local chamber of commerce. It requires you to join the local chamber of commerce. There's an expense to that. But when you get a link from a local chamber of commerce uh, directory, that is a very powerful link, very powerful link. But again, you have to join the local chamber of commerce. Another one would be sponsoring uh, little league teams. So parks and recs organizations, um, local schools, local charities, local churches, all of those things, Getting sponsoring them, right? then you often will get a link back from their websites as a, you know, on their sponsor page and things like that. Those are all local links. Those are valuable links, local news and media sites getting, um, you know, those, those are all again, local type of links, uh, um, event sites, local event sites, things like that. Those, those are all good links to have. Again, uh, one last one's a really good one is if you join like a lead share group, right? Like meetup.com or BNI groups, which I don't like BNI. I fucking hate BNI groups. It's like the soup Nazis of business networking. Um, but anyway, if you join any kind of like those lead share groups, that's another great opportunity to do link exchanges with other businesses in the same area, right? All of those are great ways to get links that'll help you to rank in maps. Um, there's also other ways that you can do it, which we do at Semantic Links, which is going out and hunting down domains that have already expired uh, in particular cities or locations that already have local backlinks pointing to them, then picking up the domain and then rebuilding it and then building links from that domain to your target asset. That way you're basically buying locally relevant links uh, to a domain that has already, that somebody let expire. And you're just snagging and snatching it up, putting some content that was relevant to whatever it was previously on that site. And now you've got a, a, an asset that you can use to link to your um, project or client's projects, if that makes sense. So great question, but locally relevant links have a significant effect on maps ranking and they work and they work really well. Moving on. Bruce says, hey, guys, do you think it is a good idea to send off direct mail to new businesses to offer your agency services like domains, hosting, et cetera? Is it a good idea or do you think that will affect reputation for the agency? No, that's that's fantastic. In, in my opinion, guys, I think direct mail is one of the most underutilized things in the um, digital marketing or digital marketing agency world. And I mean that because we're all in the digital marketing business, right? So we all think that we have to do everything online, but direct mail is incredibly effective. Um, I swear to God, it really is. And not only that, but when you send direct mail to people, they go to they go online and search for your brand name and then click through. So you're literally buying CTR manipulation signals. You're socially engineering click-through rate manipulation. Do you understand? Like, seriously, it is. And I learned that from my own. I've talked about this before. So some of you have heard this before, but from Alpha Land Realty, my real estate land flipping business that I did from 2019 to 2021. So about two years, I did it as a side hustle. And I was not intentionally trying to rank my Alpha Land Realty uh, landing page because that's all it was, a click funnels landing page. So you can't even really super optimize those. And um from my first, my first month that I launched launched that business, I did a, about a thousand letters and direct mail. And after a, a, about five or six weeks after I launched that business, I was number one, ranked number one for my primary keyword, which was associated with the brand name because that's in the SEO title of the homepage of that that funnel. And so, by the way, guys, what is the semantic web? Semantic web is about associations between entities relevance and corroboration or data validation, right? And so I, I hammered away at this all the time in our mastermind because to this day, I still get mastermind members say, hey, can you take a look at a project? And I look at their project and their title, their SEO titles are, are nothing like what I teach. And so I, well, okay, you know, you can lead a horse to water, but I can't force them to drink. But what I'm saying is like, so Alpha Land Realty was the name of my, um, which is still valid, but I, I just don't use it right now, but it's called Alpha Land Realty. So this is my, 
my brand, right? For land flipping. Okay. Um, and if we go open this up over here, now I, I haven't, I haven't done any land flipping since uh, the first couple of months. God damn it. Do that one more time since the first couple of months in um, 2021. Um, so it's been two year, over two years since I've done any, but the, my primary keyword was sell land fast, Virginia. I'm still on page one. Well, it was the last time I checked. Um, yeah. Okay. Right there. I'm still on page one, even though I haven't done any marketing or any kind of real estate business stuff in over two years now, and yet still ranking on page one. It was number one, but it got, it got to number one, not because I did any SEO work to it. It got to number one from direct mail, direct physical mail, like U.S. snail mail. That is not a joke, guys. I, I swear to God, this absolute truth. What I did was I sent out letters the first month, I, about 250 letters a week. So it was a thousand letters for the first month. And on my letterhead, it had my Alpha Land Realty logo. That's this logo here that you see right there. And so in the letter, it said there was two, there was a, two calls to action. One is to go to my landing page and submit the property information form right here, um, or to call a 1-800 number, which goes to a call center and a 24-hour answering service that I've been using since 2014. I use it for all my lead gen assets and everything. Anyway, um, so I never received a call. It was either it went to the call center or they filled out a form. But because I was sending out these letters and the call to action was to go to alphaland.realty or call this 800 number, and get, uh, provide your property details, people would get the letter and then they would go to Google and they would search Alpha Land Realty and they would click through. And because my title tag had sell land fast Virginia at the time, I've, I've since added Tennessee um, two years ago when I was still, when I was at the end of, rat, before, right before I ended this business, I started to expand into Tennessee. Um, but I, I, so anyways, at the time it was just sell land fast Virginia, uh, in Virginia and an alpha land realty. So the primary keyword was in the SEO title with my brand name, creating that association between the primary keyword, the primary service and location and the brand semantic web associations between entities, relevance, corroboration, or data validation. Does that make sense? So just from sending direct mail. People would go to, and I, I had no intention of this. I just discovered this because like five or six weeks into the business, I just was curious and I went and I had, I was running Google ads too, uh, but that was it. I wasn't trying to rank it. And I went to Google and I did a search off of land realty and I, or excuse me, sell land fast Virginia, just like here. And I was ranked number one and I was going, holy shit, like how did this happen? So I just started investigating and I looked at uh, analytics and I started seeing that I was getting a lot of direct traffic. And so how was that? How was I getting a lot of direct traffic or brand search traffic? Well, it had to have been through direct mail, right? So anyway, the reason I say I brought all that up is because guys, direct mail is not only a great way to convert, to, to create leads for your business, for your agency. It's also, by the way, direct mail is, a, is, is even more effective as a follow-up, as part of a follow-up sequence. Like in other words, if you make the initial contact digitally, right, online, but you're able to capture their... Um, uh, address their ma mailing address, then as a follow up, like direct mail is very, very effective. Um, so, and then also, like I said, it helps with SEO. It truly does, guys, because when people get direct mail, they oftentimes will go to the Google and instead of typing in the URL that's in the direct mail piece, the postcard or the letter, they'll just search for the brand name and click through. And that is an absolute fabulous type of signal right? Way better than any CTR bot you could, or app that you could purchase. So anyway, hopefully that makes sense, guys. Um, good question. Uh, yes, I would encourage you to do so. Send, I don't know about hosting and domains. I mean, unless you're, you want to be in that business. Um, it won't affect the reputation for the agency at all. Trust me that, that if anything, it will improve the reputation of the agency because you'll get more brand searches from people going and like, who are these people that are sending me this mail? And that's a huge signal. Anyway, uh, good idea, man. Greg says, how do you properly build out local page service page, build out local page service page to expand the proximity? Um, <clears throat> well, we teach a lot of that in the mastermind, um, build geo pages. Um, there's a number of ways you can do that. So 
you know, build geo pages, but I don't, I, I tested a lot with just doing like a couple, two or three years ago, there were plugins. I'm sure there still are, but plugins that would do, um, that would connect with the Google places API and would just create posts that were purely about points of interest within a particular geographic area. And that used to work. I don't see that that helps at all anymore. Um, unless it's, there's some sort of way that it's, there's relevance tied back to the products or services of the business. Now, again, just, just from my own testing, I found that those just straight up geo posts that have no tie back to the products or services of the company um, really have become ineffective, at least through my testing. I've not seen any benefit from that. Two or three years ago, there was a benefit from that for maps. I don't see that anymore. And again, it's because the semantic web, right, keeps getting, keeps evolving, guys. And Google's getting better and better and better at algorithmically being able to determine if there's relevance. And if there's no relevance, it just ignores it. Like, again, that's going back to why relevance matters for links, right? Relevance matters for links because if they're not relevant, Google ignores them, full stop. <laughs> like, and so same thing goes with like geo pages. If it's just straight up geo pages that have no tie back to the products or services of the company, then how is that relevant? How is that relevant content for the business to be published on the business website? Does that make sense? So again, I, I, maybe some of you are still testing with just straight up geo posts that have no relationship with the product or the products or services of the business owns, and it's still providing an effect. I saw a declining effect over that to the point where I don't, I don't even, I, I, I spent a lot of money on some of those plug, plugins and I just abandoned them because they just, they don't produce an effect anymore. Now, if you do it properly, you can do it, you can do well. And I teach that in the mastermind and I also been covering some of that on Twitch. Um, I'm not going to reveal that here, guys, because there's some things there that I just don't want to talk about in a public setting, unless you want to be like some of the crazy bastards that watch their, my Twitch channel every morning. <laughs> so <laughs> God bless those guys. Anyway, so well, sorry, Greg, but there are a number of ways you can do it. Um, cloud pages is a good way to do that on subdomains. Um, I'm teaching that again, mastermind also Twitch. You can catch that stuff on Twitch. If you want to sift through hours and hours and hours of raw video footage, you can find a lot of good training in there. I promise you I'm not trying to push you off, Greg, but there's certain things that I just won't reveal outside of a paid setting. Frankie, what's up, buddy? Uh, I recall you mentioning in a previous training about how you manage your to-do list by writing down a list of things to get done every day. Yep. Got Got my book right here, man. And I just finished, uh, we had a meeting with, um, we just had a, a, a corporate meeting just prior to this call for one of our businesses. And uh, and I wrote down something that was ta I was tasked with. And I was like, okay, it'll get done because it's now in my planner. And I do that with everything, guys. I write down whatever I need to do. Like at the start of a week on Monday, I'll write down, and for each company, I've got uh, five companies that i run essentially or man or work in within. And so I have five companies on my, I use a daily planner, usually use the get stuff done um, journal, but right now this is the best self journal because the, they, for whatever reason, get stuff done journal wasn't available when I went to go purchase it again. So I, anyway, I take one page and I write down like, you know, semantic mastery, semantic links, semantic SEO, tree care HQ, local fury. And I write down those five companies and then I write down my to-do list for the week for each, like the tasks that I want to complete for each one of those companies for the week. Then on Tuesday, I write them down again. Whatever wasn't done gets written down again. And then Wednesday and then Thursday and then Friday. Sometimes it'll be three weeks where I'm writing the same fucking item down over and over and over again. And finally, I just do it because I'm tired of writing it down. <laughs> like, I swear to God, I do that for me because I, that's the only way there, there's certain things that I will procrastinate on. And unless it's really, really annoying, which writing it down every day becomes really annoying, um, then that's the only way it gets done. So yeah, I absolutely do that. I do that I, every single day. That's, that's how I do it. I write stuff down. And if I don't complete it, then I write it down the next day and the next day and the next day. And eventually I get pissed. I get angry. I'm like, I'm going to do it just so I don't have to fucking write it down again. And then I do it. You know what I mean? So it's a great way to get, uh, not only that, but it forces you to keep your prioritized tasks top of mind, right? It forces you to think through what needs to be executed throughout the week, like what needs to be done. Guys, how many of you here, and I'm, I'm just saying this, the proverbial you, I'm not singling out you, Frankie, or anybody else, but how many of you here um, actually sit down and like, like think about what you need to do for the day or for the week 
every day. I mean, all it takes is 10 minutes, right? 10 minutes to sit down and kind of plan out like, what are my biggest tasks that need to be completed? What are what are the what are the highest leverage activities, right? That I can I can do that are going to produce the most results. And then focus your time on that. Because guys, if you wake up in the morning and you just like, ah, oh, what am I going to do today? And then you're reactive. You just react to whatever the fuck happens throughout the day. Like you'll you'll go wherever the wind blows you, so to speak. Um, but if you act with intention you can get a hell of a lot more done. And you can, you know, I know I'm guilty of also sometimes doing busy work, right? And where you feel like you're being productive just because you're busy, but really it's stuff that is absolutely like VA work or something like that that you shouldn't be doing. I, I'm still guilty of that sometimes, but that's why I try to write things down because it helps me to kind of keep on, on task and also um, to prioritize what I'm spending my time on, right? The things that have the highest leverage, uh, they're going to have the biggest impact on my business. So. Let me, uh, I want to add my two cents on here because something that's been helping me a lot lately um, over the past probably 18 months. Um, so I do a daily review too. I do it every day. I also have kind of a weekly review where I set up my week. Um, and basically that comes down to the higher level stuff. So review like, hey, what are the big projects? You know, whether it's semantic mastery, whether it's agency stuff, uh, whatever it is. And then out of that, I come out with a goal. So I had a business coach. I don't know if this was his idea or this is something out there. But uh, he said, as a group, we used to do this where you would have to publicly say what you will do if you do not get these done. And it has to be something effing painful. Yeah. So that's one way to do it. If you're the accountability type for myself, I get really pissed off. I don't like letting myself down, right? You don't want to get in the habit of lying to yourself. So you have to be realistic. You don't set 25 A goals because in the classic example, it's like, let's say, um, your A goal was to get aspirin for your wife. And it turns out that the three states next to you don't have aspirin. Well, then no matter what, you're driving, you know, 15 hours to go get it because you told yourself you go do it. I take it down slightly a notch from that. But these are the things that absolutely will get done no matter what, unless in my mind, there's a very good reason. Like, I'm not going to go get aspirin for my wife if we she got some herself right and but the the name of the a game is to do exactly what you told yourself you'd do so i sit down on mondays i come up with my a goals that are generally kind of bigger picture stuff and then i write it down and this helped me a lot because i work digitally but i put them on a whiteboard and i would turn my camera but my office is a mess right now and i'm in, i'm embarrassed but <laughs> i've got a huge whiteboard over there and i've got my a goals up there so that every time i walk in and out of the office or move my head i see them and for me that's really effective because out of sight is out of mind for me and i see those and it constantly gets me back on task and then the second thing i do is every day and this has been the hardest thing to do i've tried this for years and it's finally for whatever reason i can't explain why it's clicked this year is I take 60 to 90 minutes every morning and I just do whatever is the most important thing to me and what I think is going to get the most leverage that I want to get done. And it's tough because I don't look at emails. I don't look at Slack. I don't do anything until I've done this time. And I set a little timer and maybe it's just 61 minutes. It's not always 90, but I just set it and I get to work. And then, man, that has made uh, a ton of difference. And a big part of that is ignoring the other things. Get the phone out of the room. Yeah. Get in the habit of not checking your email. The world isn't going to burn down. You know, if something sure. happens, if Bradley called me or messaged me, I'd respond. But you're aiming for 80% here and just really try to do that. Thank you, Adam. That was great. And, and I totally agree. That's why, guys, I started the Twitch channel that I do for what Adam just said was because I allowed my, my businesses to, uh, you know, take over all of my time last year. And that's fine. I needed to grow stage. We're still in the growth stage, but at the point where, uh, you know, I, I was neglecting the tasks that I wanted to work on that I have for, in things that are for me, right. Because I was constantly working on, you know, management and building the businesses and, and things like that. And those are all for me too, but things that I want to work on, like what Adam said. So that's part of the reason I started the Twitch streaming uh, because I wanted to get back to spending at least a minimum, which originally was 6.30 to 7.30. Most of the time I go to 8 a.m. now. So it's on average, roughly 90 minutes that I do the streaming. And I do that intentionally now because that's the time that I get to work on what I want to work on, right? And so, and that's why I started doing that. Um, and I agree with Adam too. Like, you know, I don't, I, I, so I do that every day now specifically. Well, sometimes I miss, but very rarely. Um, because again, it's, it's, it's something that I wanted to do and it get, it forces me to do that before I start really, I mean, I, I get up in the morning and I plan, I kind of plan my day out. And actually recently I've been starting my work day at 5 30 AM and from 5 30 AM until about 6 15 AM, I study 
for about 45 minutes. And then at 6.15, I prepare for streaming at 6.30. And then I stream from 6.30 to about 8 a.m. And then at 8 a.m., from 8 a.m. to 9 a.m., I'm getting my team in order for the day. And then uh, at 9 a.m. is when all the fucking sales calls and onboarding calls and Zoom meetings and all that kind of stuff uh, starts. And from 9 a.m. until about 3 p.m., I'm usually tied up in meetings and things like that. And then usually around 3 p.m. until 5 or 6 p.m. is when we're doing webinars and stuff throughout the week, coaching calls, group coaching calls, et cetera, uh, hump day hangouts, hangouts et cetera. So again, it, like what Adam said, it, it's 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 building a routine and then sticking to that routine, Frankie. Um, the, to me, the what you were talking about, the to do list, that is my that is part of my routine every single day. Like I said, five companies I write down on the the one side of my daily planner. It's a blank sheet, so I write SL for Semantic Links, SSSEO, right? SSEO for Semantic SEO, TCHQ, Tree Care HQ, and then I just write down one, two, three, four, five, like whatever number of tasks I want to complete for the week. I just write it down every day every day. One last thing I want to talk about this, and I know we're about to run out of time, but I do want to run through comments very briefly too. If anybody of you guys got to go, go. Um, and I'll stick around for a couple more minutes. But the other thing that I want to recommend guys is, uh, you know, and I know some of you probably going to think that this is some like woo woo shit out there, right? Like some, some meta crazy stuff, but visualize the task being complete. You visualize in your mind's eye, the theater of your mind is another term for that, right? So Literally close your eyes and you don't even have to close your eyes. Once you train your mind, once you practice enough, you can visualize with your eyes open, but it's imagining, use your imagination and imagine yourself completing those tasks. Like just run through your day, right? Think through your day, right? Plan out what you want to accomplish, write down your list, and then take a few minutes to kind of visualize in your mind's eye, what it is like you executing that, those tasks throughout the day. Like it, you can you can run through an entire day in seconds in your mind, right? Like seriously, it's there's no um, there's no concept of time in the imagination, so you can run through an entire day in literally seconds in your mind's eye, and uh, and it takes practice. You're not if you've never done it before, it takes practice. So here's what I recommend, and I mean this, guys, because why why do I say that? Because it becomes it almost becomes like it's deja vu when you're doing it. It it it's 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 harder to become distracted when you've kind of imagined yourself doing the thing, whatever that thing is, because it, it's it's like it's familiar to you. And it's almost like you're it's like muscle memory, right? You're, you're just you're going through the motions because you've already envisioned yourself completing those tasks. Again, I know some of you probably like, this fucking guy's crazy. But no, I swear to God, it's helped me so much to become so much more productive and to stay on task and to get get more done throughout the day. And so. Where I learned this was from Psycho Cybernetics, Dr. Maxwell Maltz. Uh, just go to Amazon.com, look up Psycho Cybernetics or Dr. Maxwell Maltz, and you'll find it. Now, uh, the Maxwell Maltz Foundation is owned by Matt Fury, and he's taken over it. But the Psycho Cybernetics teaches you how to visualize. And by the way, Matt Fury has his own program called um, Theater of the Mind, which also teaches visualization tactics and how to... Uh, how to kind of do these things, but it, it really, really helps. And if you get into the habit of doing it, like I said, it it's hard at first, guys, but once difficult, now easy, right? It, it um, it's, it's like meditating, uh, mindfulness. Uh, another app that I I don't really use it so much anymore. I still have a subscription, but I don't really use it anymore. But for months and months, I went through every morning of ten of ten minute of uh, meditation or mindfulness session using the um, <clears throat> Headspace app on your phone. Another one is Calm, C A L M. But then there's Headspace. I like the Headspace app. That's what I've been using for, for probably four or five years now. Um, and I'll still jump in and do a, meta, a mindfulness session every now and then. But that will train you how to calm the incessant dialogue in your own mind. At least for me, my the dialogue in my own mind never stops, right? Unless I intentionally stop it, which is what mindfulness is about. Is about removing yourself from that stream of consciousness that we're always caught up in at all times. And almost like looking down on that stream of consciousness, right? Like um, an, an, an example of this would be like, or an analogy would be like standing on a bridge over top a river or a creek that is moving, right? If you look down, like you can see the stream of water. And if you 
focus in on it like a stick that's floating in the water, right? All of a sudden you get caught up in that stream and you're watching it, you know, go downstream. But if you, so, so that's like what our thoughts are. We, we think about something and we latch on to a thought and we're caught up in this stream of consciousness and this whirlwind of thoughts and emotions and everything else. But if with mindfulness, it's about kind of rising above that on a conscious level and allowing that like stream of thoughts and randomness and everything else and just kind of observing it, not focusing in on any one of them. And it helps you to kind of like to, to learn how to prioritize things, right? And not get so caught up in every thought and every emotion and all of that. I think it stoicism is kind of another philosophy that can kind of help with these kind of things. Anyway, I bring all that up just because, like I said, I'm not trying to be meta or anything like that, guys. Like, you know, um, some people probably think that's crazy. I did too, originally. But I, I said, you know what? I'm going to give it a shot. And I literally gave it a, 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 a real true effort for several months before I started to see, well, for me, it was several weeks before I started to um, learn how to, you know, meditate properly. And then after that, I started visualizing and then I practiced. And with visualization, it's like anything else. It's like any other muscle that you exercise it, you get better and stronger at it the more you do it. I've talked about this before, but how do you get better at anything? You do more of it, right? So visualizing is not something that you're natural. I mean, some people, I guess, do it naturally, but for me, it was very painful. Um, but it is something that I found to be incredibly valuable for my business is to sit down and think through things. Once I kind of developed what I feel is the appropriate plan, then just taking a, a it just takes moments to kind of close your eyes and visualize yourself executing those tasks successfully so that when you go to actually do the thing, now it feels like it's routine, like you've you've done it before, if that makes sense. So anyways, um, if top level athletes do that, where they'll practice in their mind, then why, why don't we? You know what I mean? Anyway, good stuff, guys. I'm going to run through these comments and I'm going to wrap it up. So maybe five minutes. Um, Aaron says, I've been listening and watching for a few months now and put things into place with action that I've learned from Bradley. Well, good job, Aaron. And there's been a lot of people over the years that have just attended Hump Day Hangouts and um, implemented things that they learned. And then they started making money and then they've come and joined the mastermind. And I love those stories. Like, hey, man, it was great. We, you know, I took action started making money and then I joined the mastermind. Fantastic. That's what we love to see. So good on you, Aaron. We live in a world now that the barrier to entry to learn how to craft this tool is very, very low. If the guy who needs this management tool, look for it or build it. Should you need something personal? Okay. So you're talking about for the YouTube thing. Good point. For more information on the geo service pages, one might want to resort to the mastermind. Thank you, Captain. Uh, I want an accountability partner, Adam. Let's do this. If I can start formulating a habit to wake up sooner, I'm guilty of not jolting down an agenda list. Yeah, I'm telling you, man, Captain, that's one of the best things you can do. I'm not kidding. It's it's an easy habit to develop. Um, literally, just budget 10 minutes, either at the end of the day or the first thing in the morning. I tried to do it at the end of the day, guys, but I, like I said, I start my day what now last week and a half I've start, been starting at 5 30 but my my normally my work day starts at 6 a.m and I work till 6 p.m and then that's when I go eat dinner so it's 12 hour day and I at, if I try to do the planning of the night before the day right I'm burned out I'm not gonna lie guys by 6 p.m I'm fucking brain dead every day like all I want to do is sit on a damn couch and take a bong hit and be done for the day like I'm not kidding um, uh, but you know, so I, I can't plan at night. It just, it, I, I'm not effective planning at night. So I do it first thing in the morning. Like that's my routine. Wake up, make coffee, get my vitamins, sit on a couch with my planner. And that's what I do every single morning. And I've been doing that for five years now. And it's been transformative. Um, and then again, like I said, I started incorporating mindfulness or meditation and visualization tactics or techniques. Um, Psycho Cybernetics, Dr. Maxwell Maltz. Guys, that book will change your life, guys. I swear to God, if you apply it. So one of the things I got and appreciate from Bradley's Twitch stream is it's raw and it's real stuff happens every day that is out of his control. Yeah. And I cuss a lot. <laughs> awesome. It's, I'm going to start applying that myself. Super valuable. You're welcome, Frankie. That is helpful. Richard, you're part of that, of the treat. I just feel like I'm having coffee with a great bunch of people. Yeah, guys, the Twitch group, 
you guys are fucking awesome. I love you guys in the morning, man, for real. You guys are awesome. Every morning, you troopers are there. Just, you guys are crazy, and I love you for it. <laughs> so it's been a great small group. Glad you joined. Time to start setting sail to the productivity port. Um, I'm with you on that one, Bradley, especially working online. It's easy to chase squirrels. Yes, it is. Uh, it's easy to get distracted, guys. That's why, again, kind of visualizing your day, it makes it easier to stay on track, in my opinion, at, at least for me. Guys, I'm just telling you it works for me. Okay. Last one, you said something key. I think it's easy. I also think it's easy to also see a project not being completed. Yeah, it is. And, and that's one other thing, guys. Accountability groups are important, too, for a reason, because um, as Adam said earlier, it, it, it's it's easier to let yourself down than it is to let others down. So if if you're procrastinating on something or you have a task that you want to force yourself to complete or a project that you want to force yourself to complete and you're not sure that you have the stick to itiveness or whatever to, to actually see it through on your own, publicly announce it, right? So that now you're accountable to others. That forces, that's part of, again, part of the reason whenever I make up my mind that I'm going to do something, I announce it in the groups and things like that because then it forces me to follow through. Um, I would let I would let a lot of projects go unfinished unless I announce them publicly because now I'm accountable to others. If that makes sense. So that's you don't have to do it in a group setting. You could do it with an accountability partner. If that makes sense. It, whatever the point is, it's harder to let other. At least in my opinion, it's harder to let others down than it is to let myself down. So, all right, guys, thanks everybody for being here and for the extra ten minutes. We always appreciate that, and uh, we will see you guys next week.